Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white PNLR Exile aggro deck that's looking to play lands and cast spells from exile to generate 1-1 flying thopter tokens, which will also have haste for as long as we control Pia. So this is the main build around in our deck, as suggested by one of my supporters on Patreon. And to make sure we can enable Pia, we need to have access to some impulse draw effects, which is a typical red ability, where we get to exile some number of cards from the top of our library that we get to either play until end of turn or until the next turn. In the case of Reckless Impulse, exile the top two cards of our library that we can play until our next turn, so we get a an extra turn to potentially deploy an extra land or cast an extra spell from exile, which is quite useful. And then we also have three copies of Ren's Resolve, which is identical to Reckless Impulse, just with a different name. So sometimes the correct strategy when we have Impulse and Pia in hand is to first play Reckless Impulse, potentially exile a one drop and a land, and then on the following turn we can play Pia, play a land, immediately make a Thopter, and still potentially cast another one drop to make a second Thopter, so we get immediate value in case our opponent had a removal for Pia. And then we also have three copies of Abbot of Carol Keep, a 2-1 with Prowess, introduced in the recent Explorer Anthology expansion. And when Abbot enters the battlefield, we get to exile the top card of our library, and until end of turn, we may play that card. So it's only a single card, and only until end of turn. So usually better to deploy Abbot once we have more lands in play, so we're more likely to deploy the card from exile, and get that value, potentially triggering Pia as well. And then our final impulse draw effect is Showdown of the Skulls, which will exile the top four cards of our library that we get to play until the end of our next turn. And then on the second and third chapter, we also get a plus one plus one counter whenever we cast a spell, which includes spells from exile, but also spells from hand. So that can be pretty effective if we get to exile a ton of cheap spells that we get to deploy with Showdown, especially when some cards could have haste, like the Thopters from Pia, or our Monastery Swift Spear at one mana, and then we can load a bunch of counters onto it, even after a board wipe, we can recover quite nicely. Swiss Spear a 1-2 with Haste and Prowess. We also have Soul Scar Mage a 1-2 with Prowess that can potentially shrink opposing creatures down if we damage them, which we can easily do with Play with Fire, dealing 2 damage to any target, potentially scrying 1 if it targets the opponent. And we also have Fiery Impulse, which does not damage players or Planeswalkers, so that's the drawback, but we can enable Spell Mastery to potentially deal 3 damage to a creature, which can be pretty useful at maybe taking out a Grease Fang at 3 Toughness or some other larger creatures. Then we also have two copies of Stonebinders Familiar, which is another card that synergizes with exiling cards. Whenever one or more cards are put into exile during our turn, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it, only triggers once each turn. It's also very good with all these impulse draw abilities, and it also works quite nicely with our adventure creatures. We've got three copies of Bonecrusher Giant, where we can first use the Stomp Adventure, dealing two damage to any target. So this can not only enable Stonebinders Familiar, but once we cast the Bonecrusher as a three mana four three from exile, it will also enable PNLR, so it has multiple synergies across the deck, also just a good individual card, and then another way of enabling prowess. And we also have two copies of Giant Killer, where we can first use the Chop Down Adventure to destroy a larger creature, and then still play the one mana creature afterwards. Also just a cheap creature we can play from exile, if we happen to exile it with Abbot or Impulse, so it doesn't go to waste, unlike another removal spell which may not have any targets, and then we can still use it to tap opposing creatures down, so this is also pretty effective against an opposing Grease Fang, as we can both tap it down before it gets a chance to crew, or simply destroy it with the chop down adventure. And then the mana base has quite a few red-white dual lands, as well as Crucible and Iganja, which can be channeled, potentially getting a 1 mana discount from Pia, and then Den of the Bugbear as a creature land. That's one of the advantages of not currently having Chain to the Rocks on Arena, is we get to play with more non-mountain lands, like Den and some of the other red-white dual lands, but once we get Chain to the Rocks it's probably worth including, and we might have to adjust the mana base slightly. And then we also get to free roll Gigantha as companion, although don't expect to cast it very often. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. If uh, Pia can stick around, we can generate a lot of Thopters with it. Turn one, let's say Swiss Spear. We can try to bait out some spot removal. And I go for the throat, okay. But if I play a PN now, I've got a feeling it's not going to survive. So, sure, let's go Soul Scar. Keep up Impulse. If 
Rex and Arena, okay. Opponent playing the long game, perhaps a devotion strategy. So now I could play Rent's Resolve, enable Prowess, and then have a bunch of stuff in exile ready to make Thopter's next turn with Pia. That might play out better. And then I could play with Fire now, since I won't have the mana to play Pia. Play with Fire and Stomp. And a Rent's Resolve we can keep on top. Get a decent hit in. And then next turn Pia plus Stomp. Get to make a Thopter. A Murderous Rider just as a 2-3 lifelink. Dies to Fiery Impulse, luckily. And we can shrink it down with the uh, Stomp as well. So yeah, let's go for it. Play Pia. Can uh, stomp now so the Thopter gets to attack. And we may see them chum block already. Okay. And then if we cast Bone Crusher from Exile, that's another Thopter. But uh, Pia might not be long for this world. Fatal push to take care of it. At least we've got a Runs Resolve for a bit more card advantage. Edict takes care of Soulscar Mage. Still have our Thopter. Could also channel Crucible, hit for three. Opponent falls to seven. They're still stuck on three lanes, so they might have a bunch of Grey Merchants in hand for all I know. I feel like I should Runs Resolve and see what we exile first. Okay, Showdown's excellent. So now I don't really mind playing Crucible since we have Showdown for more value. Get in for one. And then next turn I can Showdown if we hit a land, still Impulse. Four mana. Do we see a Phyrexian Obliterator perhaps? Would be pretty good on this board. Especially now that we lost Soulscar Mage, which is a way of shrinking down Obliterator without really damaging it. A Meat Hook Massacre for one, just to clear a Thopter. And then maybe cut down to finish off Giants? Nope. Alright, so in that case, start with Showdown. And no untapped lands, but we can still play Swiss Spear. Who is at five? They play Grey Merchant here, they get to gain quite a bit of life, so gotta prepare mentally for that. Nykthos also plus one mana, but Showdown also represents a lot of plus one counters. A Liliana deals with our two creatures, back up to six, and another Showdown. So no haste creatures here, unfortunately. I probably have to finish off Liliana with a Bone Crusher instead of going face. And then Impulse before it goes away. Hope to hit another Pia. Play with Fire could also work. So let's say we play Bone Crusher just as a creature. And then play with Fire, can put a counter on it. I guess that's reasonable. Impulse doesn't target Planeswalkers, otherwise that would have been the easier choice. And uh, pass it back. I guess I could Impulse my own creature just to get the plus one counter here, that seems worth it. Bones back down to five. Murderous Rider. And now Nykthos has six devotion, so still enough for a Grey Merchant or an Evoke Despair. Ouch. Yeah, I need to hit another Pia here. Start with Showdown. Impulse takes care of Murderous Rider at least. And there's Pia. So I can play Pia, play land, play Swiss Spear, and still Impulse. That's pretty good. Does mean not playing Den of the Bugbear, but that's all right. So hit them for four, one point shy of lethal. Is there 
checkpoints at one, but can they stabilize with a Grey Merchant or another Meat Hook Massacre? So they've got eight mana total. Another Liliana is not too bad, can sack some tokens to it. And go for the throw it answers Pia. Alright, so we get to keep our Swiss Pier, and then between Showdown and Prowess, we should be able to cross the finish line. And now a Pia as well. I guess we can impulse first, see what we hit, but likely gonna play Pia into Den. Okay, play Pia. Another counter, and that should already do it here. But we get to keep going with Familiar into Rent's Resolve if we'd like. Alright, so double showdown here, keeping up against the Phyrexian Arena engine. Getting to see some of our synergies in action. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Can't keep a one lander here. This is better. And then maybe bottom up play with fire. Keep the lands and then a soul scar mage as our one mana play. Still have a bit of removal with the stomp. And then now impulse for card advantage. Okay, Pia's nice. I think we want Impulse first, so we don't expose Pia to removal, and then I can maybe play Pia and something from Exile in the same turn. Alright, so at the very least I could play Pia and a play with Fire, but I might just Rent Resolve to keep going. Opponent on the Grease Fang combo deck, unfortunately. At least they didn't discard Parhelion. Let's start here. Okay, so take out Informants, and then next turn I can play Pia and make two Thopters right away. I guess a Giant Killer would be an answer to Grease Fang as well, but I'm going to be forced to run it out. can still maybe tap a Grease Fang before it gets a chance to crew. But if we find our Mills Parhelion, that may be a turn too slow. No Parhelion in Graveyard, at least. Okay, play Pia and two one drops. And uh, yeah, play it now to get the Hasty Thopters. And next turn we can keep going with Reckless Impulse. Although may need to keep up Giant Killer's ability. Chariots, not bad, but we can try and fly over now. And another Giant Killer could also chop it down. So, let's say we start with Impulse still. Can also Stomp with Bone Crusher to shrink down Chariot with a Soulscar Mage's ability. Okay, do we have a need for an untapped land here? I think tapped vantage might be okay for now. Although I guess chopping down with giant killer could be nice. So let's say the anime chariot, I take it out. The next round opponent plays Grease Fang, gets it back. Not a disaster. So sure, let's take two. Make a Thopter. And then just attack with everyone except Pia maybe. And the giant killer, we also want to leave back. Because I don't want them double blocking Pia with a cat and a wayfinder, do I? I guess I could just use Bone Crusher then. So sure, Pia gets in there too. So our opponent's not going to animate Chariot because we could tap it down. So we can just stomp a cat now. Unless we would have lethal otherwise, which we don't. And I think I just run out another giant killer here to add on to the pressure. 
opponent could still hit us with a Parhelion if they mill it and play Grease Fang. Not incredibly likely, but not impossible. Witherbloom Command. That's fine. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So good to see Pia in action. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Get to play Swift Spear, turn to Familiar or Pia. And then showdown with Pia could be pretty strong. Well, let's see what our opponent's up to. No companion. Turn one lair into elf. This is a green devotion strategy. Okay, at least I'm not worried about Pia getting removed. But uh, yeah, it's going to take a second to deploy Showdown, so her opponent can do some damage in the meantime. Warmaster, never mind, it's her opponent on Elf deck. So yeah, PL is definitely a useful tool in the matchup, but now we absolutely need to find some spot removal. So... I don't think PI gets to attack, although in what world does her opponent block here? I think I'm fine to get in with both creatures. Bowden takes it. Got to bluff a little bit of damage. And hope that uh, Showdown can still save us. Because we're about to take a lot of damage. Bowden gets to play with Court of Calling now too. Circle of Dreams can untap and make a lot of mana to activate Warmaster. And another showdown. Yeah, a removal spell would have been useful. I guess, uh, let's see, are we dead next turn? They can activate Warmaster, everything gets plus two, plus two. We're getting pretty close to dead. So I might have to bluff another attack with Pia and the Swiss Spear at least. And then play showdown. Because it's not like Pia's going to be able to block when they get plus two, plus two in Death Touch. But I might need that extra damage. Don't think Familiar should risk it. Alright, got our point to 12. And then somehow need to deal a bunch of damage next turn. Collected Company main phase. Finding another Warmaster and Mystic. So the Circle of Dreams currently making 11 mana, so only one activation. So if everything gets plus two, plus two, how much damage are we taking? Four, five, six, plus another 10 is 16. So we're not dead. Yeah, I guess we can take it, although it's not like Familiar is really going to make a huge difference next turn since our opponent can just chump it. But uh, sure. So our opponent's going to activate Warmaster. We're at two. And uh, yeah, I don't think we'll have enough for lethal here. Looking at my exalt cards, can make a Thopter, play Fiery Impulse, clear a blocker. Showdown enables prowess, but then uh, next turn we're just going to be dead to an all-out attack. There's no surviving it, even if I hang back with everyone. I've got five blockers to a million attackers. Alright, GG's. Yeah, the elf deck got us pretty good. Needed more fiery impulses and play with fires early to uh, try and contain at least the more impactful elves. And then Pia could have been pretty effective at eventually taking over. But uh, Shaman of the Pack, also a nice finisher here. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Yurion as companion. Our hand seems keepable. Got some early pressure. Pia to synergize with Resolve and Showdown. And these uh, card draw engines, also important if we're facing a more controlling strategy. 
And Jewelry Ruins tapped. So I have to be prepared for some counter spells. So maybe start with a Rent Resolve, enables Prowess, and then can maybe set up Pia next turn. Found a land, so that's great. So next turn plan is to play Pia and then play a land. Could also just make use of the Bone Crusher. So interesting spot. Maybe I do just play a land and then play a three mana Bone Crusher and wait on Pia. So let's get in for one. Could also use the Stomp to enable Prowess, but I'm fine just playing the more threatening giant. And then we'll still have double showdown and Abbott to synergize with Pia. Another disruption. Yeah, for some reason, whenever they play one, it's more likely that they have another. Okay. So do we want to commit a showdown of the Scalds and have it countered potentially? When I have a second, that may not be the worst. Played main phase to enable prowess. And it resolved. Hope to exile one land with it. And just a bunch of one drops instead. Alright. So if I find a land next turn, that could be pretty sweet. Instead, I'm probably just going to deploy all the one drops, starting with the haste ones. So those can pick up the plus one counters. And then our opponent's going to need to wipe the board. And our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, this uh, showdown was pretty good. Even if we can't enable Pia with it, just four one drops plus a bunch of plus one counters is enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand could use a second land drop. But I guess in the meantime, we've got a lot of cards we can play, even if it costs us a bit of life. So I might want to kick things off with a soul scar, actually, in case we need to shrink down a creature with play with fire. Opponent blank green, hit a land drop. So for now, double Swiss spear. Next turn we can resolve, enable prowess a bunch. And then we'll find out what uh, deck our opponent's playing. Could be a Grease Fang Reanimator. Scrapwork Mutt, sometimes played in those lists, but we'll see. And discard Sky Sovereign. So yeah, currently don't have enough damage to take out a Grease Fang, so just gotta hope they don't have it. And get in for a bunch of damage. I guess what we could try to do is uh, shrink down Grease Fang with the Soulscar Mage's ability so they can't crew Sky Sovereign, especially if they chump here. I yeah, don't hate that idea. So if they play Grease Fang, we should have it covered thanks to the Soulscar Mage. Making it so that they can't crew their vehicle. It's gonna be a Liliana instead. A fight? And you think you can win? Makes us sacrifice a creature. Sacrifice Swiss Spear. I don't think I fire off the play with fire yet, since I'm gonna be forced to run out Bone Crusher. So then I'm gonna need play with fire to shrink down the opponent's Grease Fang. And then I can also go for Pia and then Stomp, make a Thopter, but then we're vulnerable to Grease Fang. So instead, I think we just cast a Bone Crusher, keep up play with fire, finish off Liliana. And keep up play with fire. And then next turn maybe play Showdown, hope to hit an untapped red source to keep up play with fire once again. Our opponent could also run out in a Seekas Chariot here instead. Or a Shieldred, okay. So, can shrink down Shieldred, but uh, that doesn't take it out. Would be a 2-3 Death Touch. I guess we just untap here. Found another Soul Scar. Gotta go for Showdown and hope to hit another untapped red source. 
we did. And some removal. So now it's uh, public information that there's a play with fire. If our opponent does get back Parhelion, so be it. Opponent has to block, otherwise they're going to take too much damage. And then I could just uh, Fiery Impulse, keep the play with fire to go upstairs next turn in case there's no target for uh, enabling Pia. Hit for six. And then I think we're still good in case of uh, Grease Fang bringing back Sky Sovereign, at least it's not a Parhelion. And then I can play Pia. Play Swiss Spear, play with fire, make two Thopters. Likely to be enough with another play with fire in hand. And there's Grease Fang. At long last. So they get to kill both of my creatures here. Between entering and attacking. But that will leave them... Pretty much tapped out. Okay. Step one, play Pia. Play Swiss Spear. Get a Thopter. And then now we can uh, play some more stuff out. Another Soul Scar Mage triggers Showdown. And attack. So we've got a Fatal Push covered as well. Alright, sweet. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems acceptable. Swiss Spear into either Impulse or Pia. Bit of removal for small creatures and large creatures. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one, a Lair into Mystic. That probably needs to go. Question is, do I answer it now or do I still go for Reckless Impulse? Try and hit my land drops so next turn I can get ahead with Pia. Maybe letting them untap with Mystic for one turn is not a disaster, especially if they're an elf deck instead of a devotion deck. And if they're a devotion deck, Giant Killer can maybe still kill some of the larger creatures they run out. So sure, what's uh, Impulse? And land is good, although it's tapped. Can still play Pia, play them, make a Thopter. Not as good as... Play Pia and Impulse. Haven, two mana left. And another Mystic. And there's a play with Fire. So we could just kill both Elves, and maybe that's just the safest move to slow them down. And then try to use Pia alongside Abbots later. But if we had an untapped land, I think I would have gone with Pia and then just play the one burn spell. Karn, okay. That can get something powerful. Goes for a Great Henge, picked up a land. So let's say we play Pia and Abbots, then I'm not going to be able to use Pia. Can't quite take out Karn either. So maybe I just play Abbots and then hope to find another play with fire or Swiss Spear to pressure Karn. Another Abbot, I guess, works. Impulse would have been nice for next turn, but that's going to go to waste. Alright, with an untapped land, can still activate then next turn. Can maybe clear a larger creature with a giant killer. Karn's gonna minus a second time. 
So yeah, they get to search up some powerful artifacts, but at least we're ahead on board. And they don't have a ton of mana to work with. So it's still going to be an interesting game. Goes for a Cityscape leveler, so they're definitely aiming for the late game here. Mystic. That one we cannot take out. And a Rens Resolve is perfect. So if we can resolve into some goodies here, Pia can provide more value. Okay, I guess we'll play Pia and then next turn play both one drops to make Thopters. Get in for eight. Opponent untaps with essentially five, now six mana. If they go for a Cavalier, we can Giant Killer to take it out. And then we should have enough with all the prowess triggers. Maybe Storm the Festival into two great cards can save them. Yeah, there's Storm the Festival. So what's it gonna be? Okay, Polychronos and Cavalier. Yeah, that's uh, two pretty good hits. Mills two more copies of Storm the Festival. But let's see here, if we go Swiss Spear, make a Thopter. Soulscar Mage, make a Thopter. We can still chop down one of their creatures. And that'll enable prowess for us. Take out the uh, potentially life-linking Polychronos, I guess. And smash. And that should still do it. Alright, that was a nice showcase of our synergies here. And seeing the value of a couple of giant killers throughout the deck to take care of those larger green creatures. Can handle, of course, Bone Crusher Giant as the name implies, and uh, even against Grease Fang, you can either tap down Grease Fang or just outright take it out. So I found uh, Giant Killer to be pretty useful. Same with Fiery Impulse, as a 3 damage burn spell, it can actually sometimes kill a Grease Fang instead of only dealing 2 damage to it. So yeah, there's definitely a few cards you can fine-tune. There's no chain to the rocks on Arena, which is a card you could play in Pioneer. So once we get that, I might have to adjust the mana base to include more mountains, and then I'm not sure if we'll still end up playing the Giant Killer, but for now I've been happy with it. Also just a one mana creature we can play from Exile to trigger Pia, trigger Showdown of the Skulls, so it gives us a bit more flexibility there compared to just a removal spell. So this red-white deck is far from the best deck in the format, but if you enjoy playing aggressive decks that can still gain a little bit of value, then this might not be a bad place to start. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.